Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and another Commodore 64 video. And in today's video is this one, a very nice looking uh, Commodore 64 G. As you can see, the machine is uh, fully working and if you saw my uh, mail and donations video in uh, March, you saw when I unboxed this and tested it. So while it is uh, in good order, it is uh, very filthy, especially the keyboard, so uh, needs to be cleaned and uh, retrobrighted because uh, yeah, some yellowing has been going on. So this is gonna be yet another Commodore 64 restoration video. I <laughs> simply can't get enough of it and um, I hope you too find it uh, interesting to see how I restore this machine back into its uh, former glory. On the back side you can see it's C64G and uh, I had put some tape here because one of the feet uh, is loose and if you can see it this is the warranty label and it has not been uh, braked so uh, yeah, this will be the first time this machine gets opened after leaving the factory. On the side here it has a little bit of melting damage from uh, reactions from a cable that has been stored onto the machine and uh, that's not uncommon. Uh, unfortunately there isn't much to do about that. You can of course file it down or try to fill in something but uh, I think that will be ugly. So the keyboard, there's a lot of uh, dirt, brown gunk on every key, but the keys themselves, they work uh, just fine. So I don't think I'm gonna take apart the keyboard uh, this time. On the side, you can clearly see that the yellowing has been <laughs> much worse on the lower part of the case, but the upper part is also a little bit yellowed. I think this should be more uh, cream colored or a little bit uh, whiter than this. So I paid around 100 euros for this machine and uh, <laughs> prices are getting higher and higher. But I thought it looked uh, nice so I wanted it and uh, yeah but now I'm gonna remove the warranty seal. I'm not gonna rip it off. I'm gonna try and uh, use hot air to get it off in one piece at least. So I'm not gonna use a lot of heat here because I don't wanna do any damage. 150 degrees should be enough. Not sure if it wanna come off, we'll see. Okay, it's off. And here we can see the original color. All right, I'm gonna open the machine now and uh, take a look inside. I think it's very dusty because I peeked through the back of uh, <laughs> the user port and uh, yeah. But I'm excited to see what uh, motherboard is inside this. I know there were different uh, kinds in different machines. Oh, that screw was a little bit stubborn. No, just by opening the case you can actually do some damage, uh, break off uh, the back clips, but uh, try and do it carefully. Yeah, came out really nice. So what do we got under this uh, paper or a shield? Oh, look at that. All right, so it has a 250 469 board, revision 3, and uh, 
Yeah, I looked it up and this is uh, from 1987 and it's uh, the same as the C64C or the 64E board. <laughs> so this is of course uh, one of the cost reduced uh, PCBs or motherboards for the C64. It doesn't have uh, the original PLA chip that was uh, dreaded. It actually has another called Super PLA chip and uh, a lot of things were integrated into uh, single chips. Taking a look at the SID chip, it is a MOS 8580R5 from 1988. Taking a look at the CPU, it's a 8500 from 88. And uh, yeah, this was a more modern variant of the 6510 CPU. It was more modern in the way they produced it. It uses a HMOS technology and this was meant for the Commodore 64C line of computers. But otherwise it's completely compatible with the 6510. This motherboard has two CIA chip, the 6526A and B, those two. It only has two uh, ROMs. Uh, it is a combination of the basic and kernel ROM and uh, then the character ROM. This is the VIC-2 chip, the 8565R2, also from uh, 1988. And this is the combined PLA chip and the memory controller circuitry. So uh, this is uh, rather hard to find if you <laughs> ever need one of those. The keyboard needs to come off uh, the case uh, in order to be able to clean the case and I'm also going to take off all, uh, all the keycaps. Keyboard is uh, quite dusty and uh, under the keys I can see a lot of uh, dust and dirt but uh, fortunately uh, I can't see anything rusted so yeah. Maybe this is a good keyboard. Let's see if we can get these keycaps off easily or if they are very hard and stuck. This seems to come off quite easily. Or maybe not. <laughs> Let's make a little montage. Well, that doesn't look too bad. The space key uh, is a little bit different. It has this metal support. So make sure you don't break off the fastenings. So a lot of uh, dust obviously and uh, everything looks nice. I can't see rust on uh, any of uh, the springs.
time to take a look at the motherboard and I already blown away the dust so I'm just gonna go over it with a little bit of uh, IPA alcohol. Little bit of dirt. No, the board looks uh, spotless, but I'm gonna clean uh, the contacts with a little bit of contact cleaner. All right, so while I have the board out, I am gonna recap it and I found all the values, I think. A little bit uh, different uh, values on these short boards compared to the old uh, long boards. There's not a single one with the same value. <laughs> so I did measure uh, most of these to check that the values are uh, good and they all are good. So I'm gonna solder in those. Last capacitor. All right, that was the recapping of the board and uh, it's nice to have a little colored uh, caps, this red and uh, blue and some uh, brown just gonna do a quick test and see if it works like before and yes it did nice <laughs> so i'm gonna leave it uh, powered on now for a while and check if everything is okay and nothing gets uh, hot now to the retro writing and i was initially thinking using my cooking method but uh, today it's such a nice and lovely day outside so I'm gonna use uh, the sunlight so I'm gonna use these uh, vacuum bags and uh, yeah some hydrogen peroxide cream and then put it out in the sun Then I seal the bags so that uh, no air can escape. So I massage the bag real good and uh, separating all the keys a bit. Now it's out into the sun. For the case, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm not gonna use um, any hydrogen peroxide cream on uh, the top part because it uh, is not uh, yellowed almost but the bottom case had a little bit of yellowing on the side so I'm gonna use a little bit uh, there and the cream is just for speeding up the process you can actually just put it into the sun without anything, but then it will take a while longer.
three hours in the sun and I think these are ready to go now. Retrobrighting is now done and uh, look at that. All the keys looks fantastic. Can't see any yellowing. That was it for the restoration. Everything is cleaned and I'm gonna assemble the machine. And I'm leaving out that uh, paper uh, RF shield. No need for that anymore since it has no purpose and it actually just uh, makes uh, the motherboard uh, warmer. Before I close up the machine, I'm gonna add a few heat sinks. So I got a couple of here, and uh, yeah, the WIC 2 chip and the CPU, and uh, of course, the SID is uh, the most important one because they usually get the most uh, hot. Some nice slabs of aluminium. Alrighty, the machine is uh, finished. Oh no, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Maybe I have to take that keyboard apart once more. <laughs> no, I didn't have to. Oh, I forgot this tape. <laughs> The final thing is this rubber feet and uh, yeah I can see some of the others are a bit loose as well. Yeah so I'm gonna take them all off and clean off the old glue and then glue them back on again. A little dab of glue. Look at that beauty, doesn't it look great? No more dirt and uh, no yellowing as far as my eyes can see at least. I've hooked up the diagnostics uh, testing harness. So let's uh, do a little diagnostics test just to make sure that everything works okay. Yeah, and everything uh, works out except uh, the keyboard says bad, but the uh, keyboard is working and I can hear uh, the SID test. I had the shift lock in, maybe that's the reason the keyboard uh, test failed. Okay, so now keyboard says open and uh, that's correct. Alright, I think that was it for this video. Just wanna try and play a little games before I conclude here. And one of my all time favorites is of course uh, Summer Games.
Let's try the skeet shooting. <laughs> Joystick is a little bit bad as usual. <laughs> So, at least that was a new uh, world record. <laughs> Need to get the pace of the joystick movement. <laughs> <laughs> I think I won. <laughs> 10.39. All right. <laughs> All right, that was it for this uh, restoration video. I have another Commodore 64G in very nice condition now. And uh, yeah, everything is working perfectly. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the content. And a special thanks to my Patreons and my other supporters. Uh, see you. Bye bye.